Archaeology student Aaron Amintas is spending the summer at a dig in Canada's north, where the local Denny Council has asked the team to excavate a possible village site. What they find instead disrupts everything that is known and understood about humankind and threatens the very foundation of the modern world. Mysteries start to pile up as Aaron meets Henry, a local guide who reveals stories of his own. Aaron is soon protecting secrets from all sides and struggling to make sense of the discoveries. As more is found, she becomes caught up in fake news, betrayal, and international intrigue. Truth hums just below the surface in this fast-paced adventure story that spans the Canadian North, Newfoundland, and South America. While the world around them rushes to create easy answers, Aaron and Henry must uncover the truth of the past before it's too late. Well, I'm Mark Winfield. I live in Nova Scotia, and uh, I'm retired now. Been retired for six years. Well, I've written two other books before this novel, but they were basically one was a business book about investing, and the other was a book about volunteering. So neither of them were fiction books. I started this book. I'm still not sure why. Uh, about. 10 or 12 years ago. And uh, I worked very hard at it at the time, and uh, I had uh, two characters and a location picked out. So I wrote probably about 10 chapters, you know, down that road. And uh, then I, one day I printed it out and I realized that what I was seeing in my mind when I was writing it was absolutely not on the page. And so I, put it aside, and really for years, I didn't really go back to it. And then about three years ago, for reasons I can't explain, I picked it up again. So I have the same two characters, same location, Great Bear Lake, which is in the far north of Canada, up in the Arctic Circle. And uh, the attributes of the characters are the same, but the story is completely different. It's about finding uh, something and uh, the secrets that result from that and how the world responds to what they've found and so on. So it's uh, been quite a journey. I got it to about 55,000 words, which is about a 150 page novel. And said, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. And um, so I gave it to a friend who was an author and she said that, basically, uh, I like the story, but it's not very well written. <laughs> One of the things that my friend, who was the author, said to me when she read my very first version of the book, she said, Mark, everything just works out in the book. And she said, life's not like that. Sometimes your bags get lost on the airplane, right? There's bumps in the road. I had all sorts of challenges about how to write. Because in my work life, all I ever had to write was business letters. And the two books I wrote before were essentially business books and how-to books. Your character takes on a life of its own to the author, at least it did for me. I love sitting down to listen to what my characters had to say and what they were doing and all of that. And yet it's me devising all of that. So there's a contradiction there, but very rewarding. And it's, you know, a challenge to write it down in an appealing uh, story, which hopefully I've done, we'll see. One of the things that is hard for me to do is to tell you what genre the book is, because yes, it's an adult adventure fiction book, but that doesn't tell you anything about the book. Uh, I don't know how to characterize my book, which when somebody asks me what it's about, it's hard to tell them without giving away the story. And so I'm sure I bored lots of people talking about my book. But in the course of that, it was amazing to me how many people said, yeah, I was going to write a book, but never did. And uh, what I say to all of them is just jump in and do it. If you've got a story to tell, just give it a try, and you never know where it'll lead you. 
I do have some advice and I would strongly recommend any author take it. And that is get an editor. When you're writing, you're in your own world, but it's also a solitary world. You just get caught up in your own thoughts. You could be writing something that is just ridiculous, but to you in your own world, it seems fine. You have an editor who is going to speak frankly to you and who knows what they're doing is going to say, Mark, you can't say that. And in fact, my editor said that to me about one element in the book is that nobody is going to believe that, Mark. <laughs> and she was right. So, but that led to uh, uh, a new element to the story and a sort of a new line of reasoning for part of the story. We went to Switzerland to the Particle Collider in Geneva. From the visit there, and I'm not a science person, that gave me a significant element, new element to the book. One of the things I, I do when I read is you check things because we can so easily now. You, you go and say, oh, I wonder what that is, and you'll Google it. Okay, so my book, uh, I hope, is Google-proof in the sense that everything that you would be exposed to in that book, you can look up and you, you will find, yeah, that's, that makes sense. That, that's what that is. That, that's how that works. That comes up a lot. And that was hard to do. Well, I, I've worked really hard on this book and I've got no illusions about it uh, becoming a bestseller, though every author perhaps hopes that it does. And the book is going to be basically available everywhere you would buy books online. It's going to be available Barnes and Noble and Amazon, and it's uh, also available in paper and e-format. My hope for this book is that there will be some people beyond family and friends that actually read it and hopefully enjoy it. So uh, that, to me, is success of the book.